Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the all new ASUS ROG Ally. This is basically my review of the unit itself. I've had this in my possession for about a month. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I've made several videos on it and for good reason. This has become my go-to handheld gaming device, whether I want to play AAA games, indie games, or even emulation. And by the way, emulation is amazing on this device. The Z1 Extreme can definitely put the power down and even play some of the harder PS3 games on the go. At the time of releasing this video, it's June 13th. It's actually the official, at least US release of the ASUS ROG Ally. And if you're kind of on the fence about picking this up for $6.99, I'm here to tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and by the end, you should be able to decide if this is something you want, or you could wait for something else to hit the market. First things first, overall design, feel in the hand, ergonomics, really like it. I've seen some people say that it's got sharper corners, but I've been able to play for hours on end with this unit and not really have an issue, and it comes down to the weight. It's a very, very light unit, only coming in at 608 grams, which is much lighter than most of the other 7-inch handhelds on the market right now, which does make it really portable and easy to hold on to for long periods of time. Talking about the buttons here, we don't have any kind of hall base sensors in the analog sticks or the triggers, but for years I've been able to get by without them. And what we have here works out really well. We've got analog triggers around back, and when it comes to this D-pad, I'm not a huge fan of it. I wish it was a separated D-pad, but it works much better than I expected it would. For platformers, and especially fighting games at least for me, I can pull off all of my favorite special moves with this D-pad. It would have been really nice to have kind of a swappable D-pad, like an Xbox Elite controller. That way we could go with the separated if we want to. But this is something that I can overlook because it does work much better than other D-pads that are designed like this on handhelds that we've seen in the past year or the past two years. Obviously, the Ally runs Windows, and as a lot of us already know, navigation in Windows on a handheld can be a bit cumbersome. Even though we've got a touchscreen here, ASUS has also added the ability to allow us to use the analog sticks and buttons here as kind of a mouse and cursor, which does make it quite easy. Personally, I go with the touchscreen a lot more, but what really kind of sets this off is Armory Crate SE. Now, some initial reviewers did have issues with Armory Crate, but uh, personally, I didn't. And going into it, I knew we were working with kind of early software, but you know, since I've had this for a month and a few days now, we have got so many updates for Armory Crate, BIOS updates, controller updates, and everything. They've been really pushing it, getting everything fixed with this, and alleviating a lot of those little bugs that some of the initial reviewers ran into. So with Armory Crate, we can boot this up at any time. We've got our game launcher from up front. We can go through and set up custom TDP configurations and controller configurations per game. It'll automatically scan your default directories. You can also set it to scan, you know, external storage if you needed to. It'll download some metadata and box art, give us some information about the game. And like I mentioned, we've got per game profiles that we can set up. We can also move over just a bit. We can change the RGB on this. You can totally disable it. You can change the brightness. You can change the speed. And they have added a few more different presets. Personally, I leave it on kind of that rainbow mode. So it kind of cycles through on both of the sticks here. And I think it looks really good. But you can set a solid color if you want to. But I'd say one of the most important things here with Armory Crate is the TDP control or the performance control. We've got a few different presets here, and when you're on battery, it's going to be a bit different from when you're plugged into the wall. We've basically got a dock mode here, which will allow it to kind of up the performance on that CPU and GPU. But from here, you can see we've got a Windows mode, which is really going to be based on our power profile we have set with Windows. So power saver, balanced, or best performance. Performance is 15 watts with a boost up to 20, and this is all on battery right now. Turbo mode is 20 watts with a boost up to 25, and we've also got a manual mode. We can take this all the way up to 35 watts on battery, or we can go close to around 45 watts if we're plugged into the wall, and that really opens up this Ryzen Z1 Extreme. Personally, I've been setting a manual 18 watt TDP across the board, doing a little bit of a fan adjustment here. We can adjust both of the built-in fans, and this is kind of my go-to preset for basically anything that I want to play on this device. At 18 watts, we get decent battery life and awesome performance for AAA games, and we can also adjust the fan curve on both of the fans built in here. That way we can keep it nice and cool, and we're not going to hit any kind of thermal throttle or anything like that. While playing my game, I can go through at 18 watts across the board. This is what I like to do. I think it works out really, really well. Taking a look at the performance aspect of the ROG Ally in handheld mode, this thing can play your favorite AAA game. There's no doubt about it. It's really going to depend on what game you have, what settings, and especially the TDP used. Here's Forza Horizon 5. We're at 15 watts right now. 
1080p medium settings and we can get an average of 84 fps so we're working with low wattage and if you take a look at the total system power draw from the battery we're right there on par with the steam deck so uh with the steam deck running at 15 watts it pulls 26 to 27 watts total that's with everything going here and we're right there with it at 15 watts but we're getting absolutely amazing performance I recently did a video showing off a bunch of different esports games running on this unit. Here's Overwatch 2 1080p, medium settings, RSR is on. I actually got an average of 87 FPS. We've got Fortnite here, 1080p, medium settings, RSR is on, and it runs at 120 FPS. One of my favorite things about the Ally is the display. It's a 1080p IPS at 120 hertz, plus it supports free sync, so we don't need to worry about any kind of screen tearing or anything like that. It's got adaptive sync, so if you did want to play your games at 120 FPS on the built-in display, you definitely could. It'd be much better for indie games and things like that, but there are AAA games out there that will run at 120 with the correct settings. First and foremost, the Ally is a handheld gaming PC, but that's not going to stop us from using it in kind of a dock mode situation. You could use this as a full-fledged desktop for media playback, work, and especially gaming. And when you're plugged into a 65-watt PD charger, Turbo Mode actually ups the TDP even further. Now, personally, I like manual mode, but instead of 25 watts in Turbo, it's going to be 30 watts, or we can go all the way up to around 45 watts with this APU, and it definitely helps out bringing the clocks up on the GPU and CPU. And just to show you how it performs, we've got CSGO at 1440p high, and we're maxed out here in manual mode, getting an average of 118 FPS at 1440p on a handheld. Well, we're connected to an external monitor, but it's still running off the handheld. And the age-old question has been answered. Yes, this will run Crisis. And finally, here in dock mode, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 1440p, low settings, over 60, getting an average of 74 FPS. And when we're set up like this, we do not need to worry about battery life because we're plugged into a power source, so you can use this as a desktop PC. Now, this was all on the iGPU, but remember, we can also use an external GPU with the Ally. It's their proprietary XG port we have up top. And I recently tested out the 6900 XT. They also offer the 3080, and all you gotta do is just plug it directly into that XG port up top. And now, instead of using the integrated Radeon 780M iGPU, we've got this external GPU, and we can play our games at way higher frame rates and higher resolutions. Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, Ultra. I got an average of 64 FPS. Now that's right on the edge there at 1440, so I'd say 1440 high, but it still looks absolutely amazing on a larger display. And we're using that external GPU over that XG port. So it can definitely be turned into a full-fledged gaming PC with some serious GPU power. So we know for a fact that the Ally can play AAA PC games very well. And when it comes to emulation, it's really no different. This is one of the best handhelds that I've tested for emulation. I've got a full video, but I just wanted to show you some PS3 here. We've got God of War 3 using RPCS3, and since filming this, we've actually received a little better performance out of it. But in the past, it was almost impossible to run this at even 45 FPS on any handheld on the market. But on the Ally, we can run God of War 3, which just happens to be one of the hardest games to emulate for the RPCS3 emulator at 60 FPS. A little bit of fluctuation, but you know, if I didn't have that frame counter on, I'd call it 60 all day long. Really amazing performance, and yeah, if you wanted to play Switch games, not an issue. When it comes to upgradability, basically the only thing we can do here is up the storage, whether you want to use a micro SD card or swap out this M.2 SSD. It uses a 2230 PCIe 4.0 drive, and I've upgraded mine from 512 gigabytes to one terabyte. Really easy to do, and I just did a fresh install of Windows. Not a big deal for me, but you could always clone your drive and kind of just swap it right over if you wanted to. And the final thing I wanted to talk about here was battery life. When it comes to a battery powered laptop or handheld, it's really going to depend on what you need to do with that device and how much power you need to do so. The Ally comes with a 65 watt charger and we can go from 0 to 100% in 1.4 hours. And in a 15 watt test on the Ally versus the Steam Deck, I got 96 minutes of runtime out of the ROG Ally. Obviously, running at a lower TDP will net you more battery life, running at a higher will net you less. It really comes down to what you need to do with that unit. 
But remember, we do have a pretty fast charge time here when you compare it to other handhelds right now. The big question is going to be, should you buy one? Well, I'll tell you right now, if you've got a Steam Deck or another Windows-based handheld device and you enjoy using it right now, you're playing your favorite games, doesn't matter what resolution or frame rate, if you're having a good time with it, keep it. Use that one until, you know, you can save us some money and buy the next generation. It's really up to you. But if you're in the market right now and you don't have another device on hand, this is the one that I would choose. If I had to choose between the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck right now, I'd go with the Ally. You can install SteamOS on it if you want to. Personally, I just like the design, much lighter. And of course, we can get better performance at higher TDPs with this. And I don't mind carrying an extra battery pack around with me. I already do that anyway. But as it sits right now, this is definitely my favorite handheld that we've taken a look at on the channel. It's my go-to handheld at the time of making this video. And of course, there will be more powerful, better devices coming down the road. That's how technology works. So in the end, it's really up to you. If you've already got a device you're having fun with, keep it. If you're in the market, this is the one that I would choose. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning a little more, maybe even pick one of these up, I'll leave some links in the description. You can buy it right now on Best Buy's website. And there's a chance a local store near you might have it in stock right now. So definitely check that out. But if there's anything else you want to see running on the Ally, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.